This video is all about the mathematical operation of multiplication of matrices. Sometimes this can seem a bit tricky at first, so the more practice you get on this one, the better you'll get at it. Just a quick overview first of all. We now know what a matrix is. It's that table of numbers with so many rows and so many columns. We know about some matrix terminology and some special types of matrices like zero and identity matrices. We can also add and subtract and multiply matrices by numbers. Here what we're going to do though is look at what it means to multiply two matrices together and how we actually go about doing that. So here it is. First of all, like addition, we have to have special shape matrices in order to multiply them together. But the requirement is different from addition. In fact, matrices can only be multiplied when their inner dimensions are equal to each other. Now what does that mean? It means that the number of columns in the first matrix must be equal to the number of rows in the second. So for example, if we had A as a 3 by 2 matrix with two columns, and B is a 2 by 4 matrix with two rows, the inner dimensions, the 2s, are equal to each other, so we have matrix multiplication defined for A times B. However, if we swap the order of the two with B first, and write that as 2 by 4, and then try to multiply that by A, which is 3 by 2, we see that the inner dimensions here, 4 and 3, are not equal to each other. So BA is not defined, whereas AB was. In fact, that's uh, an indication of another rule which pops up from time to time, which is that, in general, the multiplication of A and B is not the same as the multiplication of B and A. Of course it's not. We can see here that sometimes it's not even defined. Now given that, if we have the inner dimensions correct, we can move on to part two. The result of multiplying two matrices will actually have a size given by the outer dimensions. So here where we had A equal to a three by two matrix and B a two by four matrix, the outer dimensions, three and four, gives us the size of the result, AB. That's kind of useful so you know what you're looking for. Now the final part is the tricky bit, uh, but it's the bit where everything happens. Each element of the result A times B, which we might call C, which has elements C, I, J, each of those C, I, J elements is given by this kind of weird looking summation. Now, if you know about summation notation, you might be able to understand what this means. But in a moment, when we see the example, basically all this means is that the I, J element of C is given by summing the products of the ith row elements of A and the jth column elements of B. So we go across the ith row and down the jth column, and that gives us our ij element of C. There's a little bit of work to do in it, but that's not too bad. Let's have a look at an example. Let's have a look at finding AB if A and B are given by these two matrices. Now, if you've already done some matrix multiplication before, have a go at this one yourself. If not, you might just want to follow through with me the first time around. So first of all, let's check out that we've even got matrices we can multiply in the first place. We need to look at their dimensions. A is two rows by three columns, so two by three. And B is three rows by two columns. So the inner dimensions need to be the same, and they are, so we're good to go with multiplication. And the outer dimensions tell us the result of the AB matrix. So AB is two by two. So that's how many things we need to find, two by two, two rows, two column. So we can confidently set up our little drawing here. A, B is going to be equal to a two by two matrix. So we're gonna need two rows and two columns. I'm gonna leave a lot of space because I'm gonna show you how I calculate each entry. So let's see, first of all, the one, one entry. Back here I said that I, J is across the i row of A down the jth column of B. So the 1, 1 entry of the product will be across the first row of A down the jth column of B. So I'm going to go across the first row, down the first column, multiplying corresponding entries, and then adding the results together. So I'm going to have 3 times 1, 3 times 1, plus 2 times 0, plus minus 1 times minus 1. And that's going to give me my first entry there. Okay, so let's just quickly do that. That's going to be 3 plus nothing plus 1 
3 plus nothing plus 1 is going to be 4, so I can replace all of that with 4. Next one along, first row, second column. I'm still in the first row of A, but now the second column of B. I'm going to go across 3 times 2 plus 2 times 1 plus minus 1 times again minus 1. So we see that that's 6, plus 2 is 8, plus 1 more is going to be 9. So I can slot that all in there now. 9. Okay, now we can do the same thing for the next row of the product. So the second row and first column, I'd look at the second row and first column of B. 0 by 1 is nothing, 2 by 0 is nothing, and 1 by minus 1 leaves me with minus 1. And the final entry across the second row down the second column, I have 0 by 2 is 0, 2 by 1 is 2, plus 1 by minus 1 is just going to give me 1 left over. So that's the result for our product of the A and B matrices. Just as a little added question, you think you could add a, a could you multiply these in the different order? So could B times A be calculated? Have a little think about that for a second. Okay, now B, to, B is a 3 by 2 matrix, A is 2 by 3, so yes, you could multiply those two together, the inner dimensions would be 2, and the result, the outer dimensions, would be that it's a 3 by 3 matrix. Okay, so to finish off this little section on matrix multiplication, matrix multiplication, uh, or sorry, ma multiplication normally goes together with division, and we don't really talk about division of matrices. Um, the, the operation to undo multiplication of matrices is to use what's called an inverse matrix. Now, the inverse matrix is just the matrix, which when you multiply it by another matrix, produces the identity matrix. So A inverse A is equal to A A inverse is equal to the identity of the appropriate size. Now, we'll only talk about inverses for square matrices, and later on we'll look at how to find them, and also some of the uses of them. But just for now, that's just the, the property that we talk about instead of division of matrices. So that's it for matrix multiplication. Uh, check out your favorite reference text or website to look at how other people uh, consider this operation. And make sure you're attempting the exercises from the worksheets. The more of those you do, the more this idea of across the row down the column will hopefully click in your mind.